So here's what we know right now about the three shooters. There are a lot of questions, of course, during the rounds about what made them commit this kind of a crime. Why did they target Atik Ahmed? There are some unanswered questions on that. But right now, of the three accused, it's now been found that Sunny was the mastermind, was the one who had, in fact, brought the gang together to target Atik Ahmed. He plotted the entire attack. Now, there's also a gangster link emerging. Sunny reportedly has been a part of the dreaded Bharti gang in Uttar Pradesh. So is that the motive? Was he funded? Was he provided the weapons by the Bharti gang? It's still a big question mark right now. But beyond that also, it says, according to the police right now, Sunny and the other accused have said that the only reason they committed this kind of a crime is because they wanted to become famous. They wanted their name to become one of the most dreaded gangsters in Uttar Pradesh. The pistols that they used were Turkish-made pistols, worth each of them worth over 7 lakhs. And there are still questions about how they got it. We don't have answers to that. The cops are still looking into that. Now, what we also heard is that the shooters were inspired by the murder of Sidhu Musewala, by Lawrence Bishnoi and how the gang functioned in the killing of Musewala. They tried essentially to kind of replicate that in the killing of Atik Ahmed. I want to now bring in Simar Chawla. He's joining us live from Prayagraj. Simar, you were there when the recreation was taking place. You were also there when the actual shooting had happened. What really is the point of this kind of a recreation? Many are asking. Is that the UP police actually focusing uh, on the nitty-gritties right now, hoping to get some leads because they've reached dead ends? As far as the murder itself is concerned, it was caught on camera. So why the need for this recreation? Well, exactly the point, Akshita. You know, uh, a lot of uh, incidents has, has happened uh, like this in the past, and we have seen that this is a protocol in which a uh, recreation scene happens. In this very particular case, first important aspect was uh, when the SIT, uh, Judicial SIT, came and did their research and went back. After which, uh, you know, the FSL team came and also the police team came for recreating the whole crime scene. Now, uh, the reason being, they ought to, uh, you know, record certain things and do the calculations which were not recorded at the real time. Uh, shootout when it happened. Uh, example for example that uh, the distance of uh, you know uh, the hospital to uh, from where the vehicle was stopped and where both Atik and Ashraf were escorted uh, you know without vehicle. Now this was the point that uh, you know the police society was being looking for that why when there was a strict vigil which was being kept media, when in the past media were not allowed to, you know, talk to Atik Ahmed, they were not even lost to come close to him. Why did it happen that at that particular night, uh, he was paraded for more than 100 meters, he was exposed to such threat and also, you know, what happened? Why, uh, you know, there were some bullets and all, you know, lying True. down there. Uh, did it happen that, uh, yeah. All right, Simar, thank you for getting us those updates. As Simar pointed out, there are still a lot of questions, particularly that the UP police need to answer about the circumstances in which Atik Ahmed and Ashraf was shot down. Thanks, Simar, for getting us those details. Let's run you through right now some of those unanswered questions. Five days on, we don't know any of this. First, how did the three shooters know each other that's still not established these three were from different districts altogether or weren't part of the same crime or anything of that sort so we still don't know how they were connected where did the shooters get these high grade weapons from each weapon as i mentioned earlier is worth over seven lakhs so how did they get their hands on this kind of pistols who bought it for them who supplied it for them is there a gangster link that then comes to the fore that's still a question that remains unanswered did anyone order a hit on Atik? and Ashraf. Cops are probing into this, but so far they haven't been able to receive any leads despite questioning the three shooters. How did the shooters know so well the movement of Atik as well as Ashraf? We've spoken about this in our earlier broadcast as well, that there was quite a bit of confusion of exactly where Atik and Ashraf were being taken and yet these shooters knew that they were being brought to the hospital. What was the motive for the crime? The most basic question that's yet to be answered right now. Is a rival gang involved? One of the accused, Sunny, is linked to the Bharti gang and it's led to questions and speculation on whether this was a hit job on Atik Ahmed by a rival gang in Uttar Pradesh. Now, these assailants, if you notice in the footage of the attack, which we've all, of course, seen so many times, you can see that they shoot Atik at point-blank range. Now, there are questions about whether these were trained shooters or did they receive some training before this attack on Atik and Ashraf. We'll continue focusing on the investigation, but in the last 24 hours, there have been quite a few reactions also that have come in on the shooting of Atik Ahmed. Unfortunately, in the last five days, with his death, 
A man, a dreaded gangster who has 100, had 100 plus cases against him, is being eulogized, is being venerated. The latest comment that's come in has also, in fact, hailed Atik's wife, Shaista Parveen, who, remember, has been absconding for 50 plus days. The apologist for a gangster who had terrorized UP for four decades continued to line up after his shooting and brazenly now defend and venerate Atik Ahmed. The latest neta to jump into the defend Atik bandwagon is former SP ally OP Rajbhar, who has, believe it or not, likened Atik's wife Shai Staparveen to a freedom fighter. अगर मुकदमा लिखा गया अपराध अपराधिक मुकदमा तो वो कोर्ट में जाके हाजी रोक के अपना जवानत करानी चाहिए भागने से क्या आना है डट के मुकाबला करना चाहिए हैं अंग्रेजों के जमाने में जब देश की आजादी की लड़ाई में महिलाएं नहीं मारी गई हैं this comment comes a day after a Congress leader demanded a Bharat Ratna for Atik Ahmed and even placed the tricolour on Atik's grave. The Congress immediately cracked the whip and suspended the Neta. मैं मैं कांग्रेस के पार्ट वाले नंबर से चालीस से पार्षद प्रत्याशी हूं और मैं ये मांग करता हूं कि अतीक अहमद को भारत रत्न दिया जाए और अतीक अहमद को शहीद का दर्जा दिया जाना चाहिए। अतीक अहमद तुम अमर हो, अतीक अहमद तुम अमर। The BJP lashed out at the Congress Neta for his shocking comment, glorifying a mafia don who had over hundred criminal cases against him. This is yet another evidence that Congress का हाथ is always atanki apradi mafiaon ke saath. We have seen how Congress leaders like Punia has said, Atik Ahmed ji, Tejasvi Yadav has given respect to Atik Ahmed. One of their local leaders wanted Bharat Ratna and Shaheed status for Atik Ahmed. But these aren't just loose comments made in favor of Atik and his clan. Since Atik's shooting, there have been a series of similar comments, with some top leaders even referring to this gangster as Atik G. Atik Ahmed ji ke bete ka encounter kal tese hua, when goor apradi ho ho, jo bhi ho, unke khilaaf karwai ho, lekin ye jo pura ghatna chakra hai, इस इनकाउंटर का वो संदिग्ध नजर आता है। यूपी में जो हुआ, अगर आप देखें, तो ये अतीक जी का जनाजा नहीं, बल्कि ये जनाजा जो था कानून का जनाजा जो है, वो निकला है। Even as details continue to tumble out of the rain of terror that Atik Ahmed unleashed for the last four decades, opposition leaders seem to be fighting it out now to glorify this gangster as a Robin Hood. Bureau Report, India Today.